Hi there, it's Bill with Smart Trades. It's about 12.43 Pacific Time on August 11th, Wednesday. And uh, quick, uh, quickly, I'm going to do a little bit of a review of our calls and also uh, uh, a look ahead, uh, both on the uh, short term and the intermediate term uh, time frames. Uh, first off, let's look at the S&P cash. And I like to do my analysis on the S&P cash or the Dow cash but uh, probably the S&P cash the most. Anyway, um, I had called for the 1130, 1135 area to be the likely target for this, uh, this wedge pattern. Uh, we got to 1129.24. Uh, that's uh, obviously about three quarters of a point on a percentage basis, about seven one hundredths of a percent below the uh, target range. And from there, uh, we had another little test and then today's uh, a uh, little mini collapse. Um, it's not totally clear to me that uh, we've topped. I, I believe that we probably have. The next rally is really going to tell the tale. And uh, that rally should find resistance if it happens uh, sooner rather than later. Around the 11, where we should get resistance around 11.05 to 11.20 or so. That's this previous shelf here and also this low here uh, that we have labeled as wave four of this wedge. Um, so uh, I think the top is in. What we want to see is a corrective uh, choppy rally that fails uh, no higher than about 11.20 or so. Uh, and certainly uh, anything that any breach of the 11.29.24 area uh, would basically reboot this count. We'd have to reset it and reevaluate and, and see again. But uh, again, when you're you know within seven one hundredths of a percent of a, of a top, that's a pretty low risk uh, scenario to uh, to sell into and at this point you know if, if I'm short here I want to at least bring my stop to break even. Uh, one other point this B wave comes in around 1157 I think that's an important area uh, if the market's going lower it needs to break through there and uh, also do so on, uh, on uh, uh, good volume and, and bad breath so to speak. Here's the uh, weekly S&P cash and again, as I've stated before, I'm looking for a decline into the 950 area. It certainly could go a little lower than that, even down to uh, close to 850 or so. But uh, 950, more or less, is my preferred area that I'm looking for uh, the market to hold into. But we shall see. That would probably occur, oh, perhaps out into uh, late September or October. But let's take it one step at a time, as always. And here's that, uh, that lower trajectory. Uh, that might take longer. We may uh, actually uh, go into later fall if that's the case. But again, we'll see uh, as, it, as it develops. And I just wanted to bring your attention to the, the possible extremely bearish count that's, that's very popular out there, that indeed we're going to have a huge uh, credit crisis. And indeed, I guess we're already into a credit crisis. The question of how it's going to be resolved, whether it's going to be a, a deflation or, or an inflation. And uh, I favor that we're going to hold. That said, uh, I certainly understand the possibility that we may uh, take out, uh, you know, this 850, 950 area. Uh, if we do, uh, I would I would expect that first off we might get a little bit of a bounce. And the the critical thing to watch after we do, uh, if we do bounce from the 850, 950 area, is uh, the technical quality of that bounce. Also, the area around 1010 to uh, 1050 on the S and P cash. Uh, if we do start to bounce off of those lows, that area could become resistance if we're going lower. So watch the quality of the rally. You know, if indeed we do get a, a nice bounce out of that 850, 950 area in the fall, and then watch the pattern of, of that, uh, that rally. And finally, uh, see if it can get back above that 1050 area. If it can't, uh, you know, that's a bit of a red flag, and, but again, we'll deal with it uh, when it comes. Here on a, a shorter term basis, that same kind of pattern. And again, here, this is the spiders. And I'll bring your attention to uh, the area around uh, oh, 10, uh, 90 up to about uh, 1150. And uh, if indeed we get a bounce, this is that previous resistance area, previous, excuse me, support area, which would become resistance if we rally back into that zone. Remains to be seen that we'll even get there, but if we do, uh, might be a place to, to look at the short side. Here is the uh, Russell uh, 2000 futures, 
And interesting, uh, just to take you back one uh, chart here, you'll notice we made a new high on the spiders and also on the S&P cash. That was not confirmed by the broader market in the Russell 2000, um, nor by uh, breadth considerations. So uh, also, if you'll remember, we had counted five waves down off of the high in, uh, in late January, excuse me, <laughs> late July. Um, and indeed, that high was never taken out in the Russell. Uh, this rally here is, is a bit of a mess off of that late July low. Um, and, you know, I, my best count is that you've got a one down and then you've got a, a very messy uh, wave two back up. Now, the possibility exists that this is an ABC decline. So this 660 area, what I've got labeled as wave two, becomes very important. If we were to rally through there on the Russell futures, uh, I think that would be an implication that we're going to, uh, an indication, I should say, that we're going to new highs. Uh, on the other hand, a weak rally that fails into, the, say, this 640 area, which again is that uh, previous uh, support area. If we were to fail into there, that's probably an indication that we're going lower. So let's watch that next rally if indeed we get one. Let's see how, it, uh, how strong it is and, and if indeed it can get back through uh, what will be uh, resistance. You'll remember that I was talking about crude oil in the last report and we were looking at the uh, 83 to 84 area as resistance. Uh, the market actually got to uh, 82.95 and from there we have fallen off. There is a, a, a possibility we're going to go back up. We're kind of, you know, just very tenuously hanging on to this uh, trend line. But you'll notice that we have bear flags both in the short term and also in the longer term. We have a bunch of Fibonacci targets. Uh, right at that uh, 83, 84 area, and so far we failed from there. Uh, possible indication of a uh, weakness in the overall economy, and obviously strength in the dollar. And we had talked uh, in the last report on Sunday about the 80 to 8050 area basis the dollar index, and the dollar index indeed I think bottomed around 8019, and that area, uh, I said that if we had a sharp rally in the dollar, that would be bearish for stocks. And, well, that's the way it's turned out so far. So watch the dollar carefully here. If indeed it keeps uh, rallying in an impulsive fashion, uh, obviously that's bullish. Uh, I'd look for, you know, the pattern on the uh, declines. You know, if they're corrective, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, a bearish sign for stocks. A strong dollar here is, uh, you know, at least on the, the short term, a, a signal of possible deflation and uh, kind of a, a red flag for the inflationary uh, camp. So let's watch it. Um, uh, one last note, too. Uh, you know, I when you're watching videos uh, on YouTube and elsewhere, uh, note the timestamp. I try to time timestamp my uh, videos to the minute. I sometimes use older charts because uh, I'm using them for other purposes and I don't want to, you know, totally redo those charts. But I try to timestamp the report. I've seen uh, folks out there on YouTube and elsewhere posting charts and then post-dating them. In other words, they wait to see if the market confirms their analysis and then they post the chart and they put yesterday's date on the chart. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to uh, predict the future if you wait until you see if it happens. So beware of folks doing that. It's uh, it's kind of a slippery slope to say the least and uh, you know look for those timestamps and see if indeed they're accurate and because YouTube only gives you after the first day it's going to only tell you the day that it was posted not the exact time so uh, beware of that anyway have a good one and uh, talk to you later bye bye